Kaboom! Welcome to the Signature Spell Bomb. Thank you for stopping by. This is Chad, and we are your Oathbreaker source. All the decks on this channel are built for the Oathbreaker format. If you want to know more about Oathbreaker, please check out the link in the description or visit the amazing community on Reddit at r slash oathbreaker underscore mtg for more information, including rules and bans. On today's episode of the Oath Breakdown, we will be looking at a $40 deck tech. The cost of this deck will include shipping and the cost of our Planeswalker. Decks on this channel are built to be affordable, fun, and interactive for casual play. This is in order to help new players join the format. Today's deck is focused on an approximate power level of 6 on the table. On the Oath Breakdown, we break down the deck and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. Today's Oathbreaker deck, Royal Twins, is a Royal Scion deck with Contentious Plan as our signature spell. The Royal Scions is a 5 loyalty planeswalker that costs 1, a blue and a red. When we plus 1 the Scions, we get to draw a card and discard a card. When we plus 1 the Scions, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains first strike and trample till the end of turn. And when we minus 8 the Scions, we get to draw 4 cards, and when we do, the Scions will deal damage to any target equal to the number of cards in our hand. We are mainly going to use their first and last ability to help control our hand and draw the cards we need to succeed. Our signature spell, Contentious Plan, is a 1 in a blue cost sorcery that reads Proliferate and then draw a card. We are running Contentious Plan as our signature spell because it helps us draw, pumps our commander, and sends a false message to our opponents as to what our game plan really is. They will probably wrongly assume that we are running a plus one plus one counter style deck. Now that we have our command zone card squared away, what's our game plan? Let me give you a little bit of background on this deck build. I asked a friend what my next deck tech should be, and they chose the Royal Scions. But with two Royal Scion decks in my playgroup, I struggled for days trying to do something different. After diving deep down the rabbit hole of all the ways these commanders could be built and poring over the deck lists on Oathbreaker Wreck, finally I just said screw it and made a Splinter Twin combo deck instead. Just gotta play twins when playing the twins is what I decided. Sorry, this is one of those that might not make you any friends. Our goal during the game is to slowly burn our opponents down and staying relevant as we assemble our combo pieces and then go off. Now, on to our breakdown. In our first section, we need to set up some extra mana to get ahead and stay in the game. Here are our fire starters. Prismatic Lens is a 2 mana mana rock that taps for colorless. If we pay 1 and tap it, we can filter our mana. Sphere of the Suns comes to play tapped and can be tapped for any color mana 3 times. Talisman of Creativity taps for colorless, or if we're willing to pay 1 life, it can tap for either of our colors. Next, we have Izzet Signet, another 2 mana mana rock that if we pay 1 and tap it, we get 1 of each of our colors. This can help us filter for some of our more expensive cards. Is it Locket for 3 mana can tap for either of our colors, and if we pay 4 Is it and tap and sacrifice it, we can draw 2 cards, which can really help us out late in the game. Having gone through all of our mana rocks, in our next step we will look at cards that help us get our opponent's life slow in the slow burn. Electrostatic Field and Gutter Snipe will do damage to all of our opponents every time we play an instant or sorcery spell. Firebrand Archer does this a little bit better because it will do damage to each of our opponents any time we cast any non-creature spell. Ironcrag Pyromancer is our secret VIP in the deck. With our commander's first ability to let us draw and discard a card, she's like having a lightning bolt on a stick every turn. We can use her ability to keep down planeswalkers and small threats, Plus, many of our spells will draw us two cards if played on an opponent's turn. After holding down the game, our goal is to splinter twin and combo out. Let us discuss this process in Twinning Off. Splinter Twin is a 2-2 two two red enchantment aura card that enchants a creature. It reads, the enchanted creature gains tap. Put a token copy of that creature onto the battlefield. That token has haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Once we have Splinter Twin, we need to enchant one of the following creatures already in play. Corridor Monitor, Deceiver Exart, and Pestermite all have abilities that let us untap specific types of permanents. In this example, we're going to use Corridor Monitor. 
Once Corridor Monitor is enchanted with Splinter Twin, we can tap it and make a token copy. The triggered ability of the new copy will then untap our original Corridor Monitor and then we can tap it again to make another token. We can repeat this process infinitely and attack for massive damage, or this can combo with one of our other cards later in the deck tech. Since this combo is how we win, how do we get our combo pieces? That's easy. We draw to dig deep down into our deck in our next section, doubling down. For one mana, careful study draws us two cards and then we discard two cards from our hand. For one red mana, faithless looting does the same, but it has flashback for two and a red. So we can play it again from our graveyard in a pinch. And treasure cruise costs seven and a blue and draws us three cards, but has delve. So in the late game, we can ditch cards from our graveyard to play it for maybe one blue or somewhere between one blue and eight. Frantic Search costs two and a blue. We get to draw two cards and then discard two cards, and then we can untap three lands. Chemister's Insight costs three and a blue. It's an instant. We draw two cards, and it has Jumpstart. This will allow us to play it again from the graveyard. Factor Fiction lets us reveal the top five cards of our library. We hand those to an opponent, and they'll separate those cards into two piles. We put one of those piles into our hand and the other one into the graveyard. Next, we have some X spells that will let us draw big. Pull from Tomorrow cost X and two blue. We get to draw X cards and then discard a card. Epiphany of the Drown Yard reads, reveal the top X cards plus one of our library and separate them into two piles. An opponent then chooses one of those piles and we put that pile into our hand and the others into our graveyard. Commune with Lava cost X and two red. We exile the top X cards of our library and then until the end of our next turn, we may play those cards. Our last two cards in this section are some value enchantments in Monetary Siege and Outpost Siege. Monetary Siege reads, when enters the battlefield, we choose cons or dragons. At the beginning of our draw step, we draw an additional card and then discard a card. Or if we choose dragons, spells our opponents cast that target us or permanents we control cost two more to cast. This can be very helpful in the late game to play it that way. In the early game, when we're looking for our combo pieces, we'll probably play cons. Outpost Siege reads, when enters the battlefield, we choose cons or dragons. On cons, at the beginning of our upkeep, we exile the top card of our library until the end of our turn, we may play that card. And on dragons, whenever a creature we control leaves the battlefield, Outpost Siege deals one damage to target creature player. The dragon side of this will actually combo with Splinter Twins when all of the creatures it creates are exiled at now, in order for us to survive to set up our plans, we will have to sometimes get in the way of our opponents. And our next step, duplicity, will figure out how. All of the cards in this section have two uses. We can use them to counter to stop our opponent's abilities, or we can use them to protect our setup. Spell Pierce costs one and lets us counter a non-creature spell unless its controller pays two. Is it Charm is kind of a Swiss Army knife for us. For one blue and one red, we can counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays two. We can have a deal two damage target creature, or we can draw two cards and discard two cards, and we only do get to choose one of those options. Negate for one and blue lets us counter non-creature spell. Unwind does the same, but then afterwards we get to untap three lands. And Rewind will let us counter target spell, and we get to untap up to four lands. Now that we've gone through those interrupting cards, let's look at some miscellaneous cards that can support some of our strategies in Lonely Singles. Contagion Clasp enters the battlefield. We put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. But the main reason we're playing it is that pay four and tap it to proliferate. This can help us get ahead on our commander's ability and maybe use their minus eight more than once a game. Flux Channeler lets us proliferate every time we cast a non-creature spell, which is most of the spells in the deck. And Sage Row Denison allows us to mill any player the top two cards of their library into their graveyard every time a blue creature enters the battlefield under our control. This card will also combo with our Splinter Twin creatures. One of the other things we may need to help us survive is a little bit of board removal. Magma Quake Cost X and two red and deals X damage to each creature without flying in each planeswalker. And Earthquake deals X damage to each creature without flying in each player. Now with all the incidental damage we do off of our 
creatures that deal damage to opponents, this can actually help us knock players at low life totals right out of the game as well as their board states. Now that we've gone through every card in the deck, why don't we go ahead and go to the mana base. In the mana base, we're running three lands that come into play tapped, but can tap for either of our colors with Highland Lake, Is It Guildgate, and Swift Wilder Cliffs. Also, when Swift Wilder Cliffs enters the battlefield, we gain one life. Is It Boiler Works can tap for both of our colors. It does enter the battlefield tapped, and we will have to return a land we control to our hand. We're also going to run seven mountains and 13 islands. Now that you know every card in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player, using their optimized at the time of recording, including the cost of shipping, but not the basic lands. The average deck cost for a Royal Science deck on Oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $87.98. Our deck is going to be much lower at $38.34. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description. This deck was built on a budget of $40, so if you have the resources, here are some betterments and improvements you might want to consider. We can add a red combo piece for our Splinter Twin and Goblin Sharpshooter if we take out Electrostatic Field. We can wheel everybody's hands away and get the better cards we need to complete our combo with Magus at the wheel, so we're going to pull out Pull from Tomorrow. We can run Jace, Wield of Mysteries as an alternate win condition with all the draw we're going to be doing. In doing so, we're going to remove Sage Row Denison. For some extra stability in the deck, we can add Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. It operates like a second Splinter Twin. Let's remove Commune with Lava. Windfall forces each player to discard their hand and then draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards discarded this way. This can really help us in some games. And we're going to remove our signature spell, Contentious Plan. Since these wheel effects let us see a lot more cards, we're also going to be running Jace's Archivist by paying one and tapping it. Each player discards his or her hand and draws cards equal to the greatest number discarded this way. In order to add this, we suggest removing Epiphany of the Drown Yard. Here at the Signature Spell Bomb, we want to be your source for Oathbreaker content. You can help us out by telling us what we can do better and what kind of content you wish we would provide for the community. Also, please let us know what you think of today's deck tech. It also helps us if you remember to like, share, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when our next Oath Breakdown video goes live. We have merchandise, link in the description if you want to show your signature spell bomb pride. If you want hints to future content for the channel and you want to connect with us, please check out the social media links listed here. If you want to support the channel directly, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak another deck. Mm -hmm.